let us uh, describe the similar test section than the one. See what is the difference between the other test section? The other test section what I had was I had just a steel plate with etchings and I used to put a, a cap, a polycarbonate cap of a rectangular cross section and the etchings were of different se sections. So, I could just put the polycarbonate cap of different heights and change the test section dimensions. In concept that was simple, but the leak issues at the o-ring seal of the plastic and the metal were quite sensitive. Okay? And sometimes you need a lot of expertise to do this thing uh, in a way that is quick and reliable. Uh, so, anyway this one is high heat flux. So, we, so, I will describe more about the details of this, this later, but operationally you have water inlet, you have steam inlet, you have a splitter, a splitter plate, you have a copper a rectangular cross section which is put in this steel housing. In the steel housing these red inserts are copper heater blocks and each one of uh, here there are four being shown, there are five perhaps and there is a camera on the top, there is a sapphire side class and you have this stagnation chamber. What it does is that you do not need most of the time you do not need a recirculation pump, there is so much pressure in the uh, you know large amount of vapor coming out at high heat flux that it you can just tap that stagnation pressure and, and feed that back in and for low heat fluxes you will keep that. Then instrumentation wise somebody was asking notice none of my thermocouples at the bottom of this copper channel pierce into that. It is close to it and I also have another one here, another one here, another one here th thermocouple. So, I can do modeling estimate from crude formulas as well as put the whole um, a co copper block on ComSol and do conduction analysis with a, with the known heat sources. The le heat leakages are the important thing to, to be able to estimate when you know how much heat is going in. So, there are various ways to do that analysis from simple to more sophisticated and in the end you know heat going in in each one of the modules and the total heat going in. You know the water flow rate and you control that, you know the steam flow rate and you have planned to. We, besides knowing the temperature and you know between these two cartridge heaters in between there are also thermocouples wrapped in insulation. So, you also have, we also have some more surface temperature measurements uh, between, so we can do a proper conduction analysis. The instrumentation on these two sides, you have two absolute pressures and a differential pressure transducer. So, you know uh, both. Absolute pressures are just to know the absolute pressure signals and know their, uh, know the, the features of the signals and differential pressure. So, all these things we you going to use to do the pressure difference uh, issues associated with high uh, heat flux. Uh, somebody was, uh, you, you were asking me about how do you take pictures. So, what we do is uh, you are taking picture here, you are coming uh, put a light source this way and you adjust the light source and camera trial and error, we are not experts in optics. So, what are the main features? Working fluid is water, the housing is very difficult to make because I wanted durability that was a stupid thing to do because it, this stainless steel is even though we knew it is hard to machine it becomes adds to cost, but it is corro corrosion resistant at high temperature. So, it would last I just need to be able to replace that copper test section, but the housing will remain. Okay. Achieve high heat fluxes right now we are, we are shooting only at 500 watt per centimeter squares pressure from about 100 to 400, 1 atmosphere to 4 atmosphere, flow visualization by high speed camera, a new he heater block design, both temperature and heat flux controlled experiments. So, I can 
either call it known temperature or known heat flux and find one or the other. So, the assembly is like this, you have a inlet flange, you have an outlet flange, you have the stainless steel housing, the heater tray cartridge will go and stick under the bottom of this flow channel which is this rectangular cross section, there are o-ring grooves and this sapphire will sit on those o-ring grooves and then this, uh, this, this one through bolts will tighten from both sides, you can see how the assembly works in the next picture a little bit better. So, you have these are the locations for the heat, these are the heaters 1, 2, 3, 4, half on that side 5, 5 and liquid flow there is a convergence flow reduction half side class these are the pressure ports in the running through the hole through the steel casing, the bolt holes, o-ring groove. Here all places where you could have leaks are being handled by o-ring grooves and compression. There is a channel insert gasket location to slightly separate for the heat flow out into the conducting material, but there is not too much care there. So, this is the assemble, assembled version where the cartridge heaters, there are ceramic insulators between this and there is a tensioning plate here which holds this together through these four bolts. The resistance heaters are to be inserted and taken out as needed. There is an insulator retainer and these details of these drawings and machining I just give the concept okay, and I tell what it is and this one was done by 3 to 4, a team of 3 to 4 American undergrads and they are very, very careful, uh, but there has to be a lot of iteration because they want to design something, but if the purpose and the design, purpose for the design that is where uh, a lot of communication is needed and sometimes mistakes happen because I, I, I just, I, you need to know enough about what they are doing. So, it becomes very difficult for me to take this kind of a detailed experiment if a very experienced experimental student is not there. Okay. So, if there is an experienced doctoral uh, student is there, he knows what are the things I am thinking about. Then he has all those extra knowledge about hardware fittings, leak things. Then he interfaces with whoever it is. So, in this kind of business, you know, imagine I am sitting there in a week, I have about 10 journal papers going through, through me and each one is screaming at me, the authors, the chief editors, that thing it is. Then you have to do your bureaucratic work, then you have to do your teaching and then yeah, you have to make sure that the doctoral students and master's students write their documents well. I am sorry to say that even there they do not write the well. You are lucky if they are, you have students who write well and sometimes I, we do have. Then I have uh, in this particular case for 5, 6 years I had a brilliant American student. So, I, I had to, it was easy for me, but now I have to find somebody who, who can have his skill and uh, otherwise you, you know with the CFD has its own problems, this one has its own problems. And if you can, if you, if I have to get into every detail, I cannot do my job. So, those of you who want to be a academics, and you want, I want you to do research and education, but you have to remember that resources are not just money, money, people, and teamwork. Otherwise, you don't. So anyway, this is the test section uh, with the pressure ports here on the top, and assembled we are testing I think water air testing going on, leak testing is going on for the test section. So, you are looking at the test section from the top, so you are able to look at these differential pressure transfer support, the sapphire glass, the absolute pressure, you are looking from the top here. This is the actual te uh, copper test section, this is where the liquid flows, there is a splitter plate here liquid and vapor flows through it. 
Now, this is the inverted thing for putting in thermocouples in the in those bead holes. Uh, this is what I need to be able to as soon as I go I have to write to colleagues at MIT and need to be able to replace it with special superhydrophilic polished superhydrophobic surfaces. I talk to them there are labs which do that. So, I hopefully do not have to do it myself I would rather buy it okay? because that becomes another extra careful research, but a lot of people do those those kind of boiling condensing flow experiment. So, it, I should be able to team up with that group, it's just testing the how well you can see through the camera that is all. And he, here is adiabatic run with air and water and you can see some air bubbles. So, uh, so, you were asking the heater the heater dimensions are there you put the cartridge heater from this side there is a bottom and heat goes through the narrower portion and, the, and and here is here is the narrowest part where it is mating with the. So, if you are looking at the temperature and heat flux profile this is the high heat flux zone you start with low heat flux and like what like fluid flow you are <laughs> channeling the heat up. So, this is a cheaper version if you see the write up there is a text on this experimental approach I did not start it this way these are well known ways to do it I wanted to do very thin film heater and that was becoming a nightmare in terms of cost and research. So, we went back to the old method because I wanted to have originally a heater that would model for me a microchip or a bunch of microchips on an integrated circuit which which is doing a kilowatt per centimeter square or so then I could have access to the rest of the system's geometry which is how, what the actual application would be. But the cost and budget issues and time forced us back to the simpler heater. So, this is a stainless steel housing in which that copper will sit here you flip it out and the, these are the liquid outlet port and this is the these are the for the bolts this is where the heater blocks come in is up this is the steam outlet port. Now, the very important thing here which is hardware, but it is also physics I will tell you why is this coming here and blocking and then going transversely and what would happen if you did the experiment with so, I just explain that concept. This is a standing wave that I am creating with the help of acoustics. Suppose, I was having liquid flow like this vapor flow like this and I decided to have my vapor go out like this and liquid go out like this and I started pulsating my vapor and I started pulsating with F vapor equal to F liquid. What do I see? I have forward moving waves and I will make it even more open. So, I let here the exit liquid comes out and vapor goes out and this forward moving waves will go out and out of the system there will be minor waves and no large amplitude waves that are permanently there because at this instant it is there that would be here next instant a new one will come. And if I am if I put my heat flux sensor here I get 5 percent enhancement not 1000 percent enhancement that you see because the waves are very small amplitude and they are traveling. So, what what we do here is we go out you see and this is wave mechanics issues you will say well vapor is moving like this liquid is moving like this short term is in the is in the wave going to go like this yes, but now my vapor has to go like this if I start pulsating my peak of the sound waves are going and reflecting 
primarily in the axial direction and secondarily some of the sound wave energy escaping that way. That sound wave pulsation when it interacts with the wave motion and if I say if I call this peak x p normally x p versus time is a forward moving characteristics if, if you remember uh, uh, when I was just doing the simulation in channel I, I did not discuss it. It just moves forward with positive speed, but with the interaction of this acoustics and this they all will bend around and, and become these standing waves that I showed you in the video. That means you have eventually things are not moving forward. The larger wave is standing if you suddenly so that is a long term behavior, but, but if you come and knock it you will, you will see a little ripple climbing up on top of the standing wave and going you can see that. So, that is wave mechanics this side of it is acoustics mediated waves interfacial waves and this side of the behavior is just forward moving interfacial wave. How easy it is to do the theory for pulsatile flow? Not at all. It is I the theory that I showed you was where I where I was very proud of the theory was just vapor going like this liquid going like that. I was not looking into acoustics I was not even planning to do acoustics. So, notice in my plan and agenda obviously it depends on resources and money and number of brilliant students if that technology goes up then there would be people who would be wanting to simulate with the acoustics present. Uh, what I am doing right now is I have this Nusselt number equal to Nusselt number study and this is an experimental component percentage enhancement in Nusselt number as a function of non dimensional amplitude and frequency of any one of these. I, I since I keep the frequency same in both of them roughly like that I can generate this function and will add that to it and hope that that works. So, what I am trying to say here is that the flow that is realized normally when you learn classical fluid mechanics or heat transfer you say the only boundary conditions that matter are the boundary and inlet condition exit it dip, decides by itself ok. It is called a parabolic problem there is no exit condition dependence. You do this experiment with this exit shape or you develop a, a, a vibrating diaphragm it will change the acoustics it will change the wave structure it will change your heat transfer rate. As I already told you you remove that exit and have the vapor go that way you will not get the same pulsatile flow. So, it is a profoundly different flow this is called exit condition dependent flow and it is coming because you know you have in, in compressible and this is not a compressible flow you all have taken compressible gas dynamics where things depend on the exit pressure. This is still low Mach number vapor and low Mach number liquid it is a incompressible vapor incompressible liquid it is just that the structure of the waves are dependent on exit condition and structure of the waves matter because they determine the heat flux and therefore, you have this profound and beneficial impact. What, and what is happening here is I am using all the physics that happen in bubble dynamics ok, nuclear pool dynamics. Just hypothesis and experiment theory is only the part of theory that I showed you I consider that a major advancement, but it is majorly behind the actual experiment do you understand that. So, complex stuff is still best handled by experiment and a lot of lot of discovery experimental discovery the cutting edge you know 
we have a lot is, is very important and then comes the theory some people have insight into so we can do trial and error type and some uh, insight in this case I, I wouldn't claim that I had a rough idea what I wanted to do but I was quite foggy it was so I wouldn't call it I had an insight to know exactly what's going to happen I knew that it was going to become exit condition dependent how I don't know so uh, I would have argument with my student and the two of us will try and he'll say okay now I understand what you're saying let me go try to it the next day he doesn't understand what it's, he doesn't want to do it so it's a it's a so this was an experimental discovery and I'm still waiting for but this what I'm trying to say this extra outside flange compressor chamber and acoustics are very important okay hardware software and advanced physics they all come together. Remember how, how much software was there on Nusselt study in the morning? You know, pretty, pretty sophisticated technology, computational technology to give you this correlation. A pretty sophisticated hardware and pretty sophisticated physics in two, two areas. All these areas of physics from a theory point of view and a quantitative point of view is not understood. So, what is my confidence level my confidence level is that I am seeing the same in annular boiling that I am seeing in annular condensation okay. So, more of the various parts the flow reduction halves housing exit flange flow channel o rings that will be put around s sapphire side class encasement bolts side class encasement case on top of the side class it will go and flip it ok. Yeah, but we have to ma manage uh, about sometimes close to 140 degrees Celsius ok. Yeah. And we have to match the expansion coefficients of all the parts steel, sapphire glass, etc. So that and the o ring and Cushing, so that we have a fairly good chance that the if there are any mismatch in expansion, it is only going to tighten the seal and not weaken the seals. I, I cannot answer that because I just gave the charge to my students that whatever the expansion should be it should lead to better tightening and not cracking and not weakening and that does not mean that it was done easily they did a lot of work before they came up with it. But I just charge the concept and not the detail we have to live with trust in this thing. So, I cannot answer your question because I did not do the detail. So, we are back to the flow loop and I just described the experimental test section I think I have already described the flow loop. So, I do not need to. So, you see the whole stuff is here on this assembly these heaters are going to consume a lot of power. So, there is the heater controls and this kind of metal struts these are uni struts on which this entire thing is assembled. So, the here is the experimentalist sitting there it is his computer and there is a protection in case there is something happening. So, this is a protection zone and then you walk up and do this. Uh, this is my new flow loop and in the back there you can see that my FC 72 loop ok old loop ok which I discussed in the beginning. These are the details of the this is one chassis in which various modules of data acquisition cards are put in there and analog input sampling analog input thermocouple input thermo analog output and this entire thing is the chassis. When you plan the experiment again this is something I do not get involved in great detail uh, I all, almost always look for students who have either trained themselves in the lab for enough time. Uh, so, the input voltage voltage range output voltage range the number of channels are 32 channels 16 channels sample rate 250 kilohertz 
and accuracy is 6220 microvolt. So that is 6.2 millivolts. Uh, so each, each module has to be specified for the input and output voltage range and number of channels that you are going to need and sampling rate that you have, what is the accuracy you can live with before you buy. So that much thinking for your instrumentation you need to have. So if you do not, you have not done the preliminary calculations that I did first two, three years, two, three days, you would be ordering things and then wasting money or sending back and forth. So we have a bunch of T-type thermocouples. These are 1 degree Celsius error. These are E-type and there is a bunch of K-type. Then none of them are very accurate here. The, and these are used for different purposes in various in places in the flow loop. We have a, a digitally driven pumps full, uh, which, which have an RPM range and there is a pump head model. This is a pump head for the compressor. I, I believe that I have a pulsator compressor. So these, there are a lot of hardware details that I have not answered or I am not very familiar with. But if you go back to the document that is provided to you under this day 9, there are written notes for lectures which I have taken from some of my newer experiments. They give, give you a lot more description of these things. Okay? You can read up, find out and questions and if you if it is absolutely essential, only then I would like you, because if you send me an email with a question, what would I do? I will have to send it to somebody. I may be doing 20 different things and the guy whom I send it might be doing 20 different things. So it might get lost, but if it is really vital something that you cannot figure out by yourself, I may try to send it to one of my students. There are descriptions on the safety procedures, vacuum purging, startup, control, shutdown on the FC 72 one. Then there are some, there, you can ignore all the section one which are motivation which I have already gone through. The motivation part I have already done here. A little more on the water flow loop I will describe here. These we discussed, this we discussed. Why is it that it is not showing up? I do not know. There is some problem here. I think I roughly all these issues I went over. Let me see if I am missing. I have highlighted some. Yeah, this steady state operation and pulsatile operations start up of the experimental near the end of that document, uh, you would find that I have highlighted some parts. If you, are, if you have a picture in front of you and you read through it, you would understand better and you, you maybe you will find something in your uh, flow loop, something that is of use to you. And uh, the main difference between your flow loop and this one is just a larger number of dynamic data and a larger number of sensors and more electronically controlled devices and temperature zones. So it adds to, uh, so it is a give and take, but if you have to establish this fundamental physics, nothing less will be needed. You know, you have to have absolutely free of, you know, very good purge mechanisms, no non-condensables and the data should have high fidelity, repeatability, which we are fortunate with the FC72 condenser experiment and hopefully these two experiments data will come. 
the water experiments data haven't come out. The FC72 experiments is running, there are a few snags, so, but we are getting results that should reconfirm that, but up until it's published, I do not really have much to say. So with regard to tomorrow's lectures, I will come up with something, with some questions to entertain you, but it would be more useful, I think, for you to ask me questions, and if not, like what we discussed, each one of you get up on the blackboard, tell five, ten minutes what you're what you're trying to do, or you connect your laptop and ask how what you have learned in my phase change lectures can be adapted to your phase change problem, whether it is spray cooling or what it, whatever it is. So that way, there would be a little more cross fertilization of ideas. You may want to be, you may be able to take something and feel free to ask me anything on the CFD, on the modeling part. That is the part that I you know, that I have to be more directly involved with. The, there are a lot of kids who can run with the hardware, but they are not interested so much on the modeling side. It is the other way around in India. Here are a lot of kids on the modeling side, fewer on the hardware, but I am glad that I see the three of you from Chalandara doing experiments and even Tapan is doing experiments. So experimental research is picking up, but you know you it should be always lead lead with the experiment but don't ignore the supporting theory, modeling and simulations because otherwise you are not going to get as much return on your investment as you would like. Just as so, with that, I would call it off and I will think of what I want to do tomorrow. But practically, other than flow control details that I have not discussed, which takes more time, and even if I did, I do not know how much you would, but a lot of these are PID controls. You know, all of you have used PID controls, is it? No, you give, you sense, you give feedback, you want it to be at that flow rate, you want it to be at this temperature, almost everything. So you have repeatable experiment every time. Okay? My liquid flow rate has to be 1.2 gram per second, vapor, hold it, inlet pressure, hold it. Okay? And then, yeah, then some, not, so there is, that, there is a control strategy for the entire problem. There is a startup strategy. There is a purging strategy, there is a control strategy from startup to steady. And some of those strategies you think or you plan, like we have a planned strategy for this water one. But then you, as you do learn, you modify it to you find better strategies. Maybe some strategy are not as effective as other. And those part, those whole things I am not writing or not discussing. Uh, but they are very much a part of this of this experiment. Without it, the experiments can fail. But this is a course on boiling and condensing. So the reason for bringing that out is that these kind of systems, and from here if we go to supercomputer cooling and others. So I wasn't going alone on that. You know, I still I, I still have people at Purdue and people in Germany who do that for their living. So they are very good at it. And with that teamwork we go. And they, they have looked at all this and they are willing to, to help out. So there is a lot of work ahead for, for my group. Okay. So do not get psyched by it. There are ways to handle complexity. Just that it has to come through teamwork and the right kind of team and motivation. Uh, any other questions you have right now? If not, then please come prepared with your questions that you, some of you have been asking, at least three of you have been asking for. You, each one of you, I will first give you the time to do something. If not, then I will do something. 
uh, but more or less I, I want it to be more interactive in, on the last day of the lecture and Atinder can crack his PJs. Huh? Okay. All right. See ya.